mentioned before, uh, we'll be discussing about the cardiomyopathy, wherein it's very, very, um, very, very relevant this nowadays. This is of our, you know, mga, yung mga bigla na mga bigla na mga heart attack, heart failure. So parang saan ba, saan ba talaga ito nanggagaling? Ano ba yung cause? And ano ba yung magiging treatment nito? Or do you know how to prevent this kind of um, kind of um, cases? So to discuss this, uh, let me call on Dr. Camila Te to discuss this um, topic. Cardiologists usually, you people see us when uh, they're at the end of life already. Uh, they already have heart problems, heart failure. So what we want to try to do this morning is maybe um, talk about some of the not so common uh, cardiomyopathies, no? and maybe we can uh, disseminate some information uh, about this. Uh, and in the end, uh, what we want to do is hopefully we're able to diagnose earlier and prevent things like this from happening. Okay. So when we talk about uh, cardiomyopathy, so if you talk about cardiomyopathy uh, definition, so cardio, puso, no, myo, muscle, pathy is a pathos no, or a pain. So uh, very simply, it's a, a weakness or a sickness of the heart muscle. And uh, we're, we're so used to hearing about heart problems like yung barado yung ugat, no? So, when you say barado yung ugat, then usually you talk about uh, atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, no? And mga Pilipino, sanay tayo marinig yung mga aromatic, no? Yung mga kamag-anak tayo ng aromatic heart disease ng bata. Yung aromatic heart disease is usually a valvular disease, no? And yung mga congenital heart disease, yun yung pinanganak pala, may problema na yung puso, mga puto sa puso, yun yun. Um, when you talk strictly about cardiomyopathy, parang exclude mo na lahat ito. You know? uh, but that's the strict definition of cardiomyopathy. But if you go to the general de definition of cardiomyopathy, which is a problem of the heart muscle, uh, all these three conditions actually can cause uh, a cardiomyopathy. Okay? Usually when you have a cardiomyopathy, the manifestation is either mechanical you know, or electrical. Pag mechanical, ang puso ang pump, puyo, di ba? So, pag humihina yung pump, pump failure. Pag pump failure, hindi nakakapagtibok na maayos yung puso. Uh, hindi na susupply yung mga importanteng mga parte ng katagwan, katagayan ng utak, ng atay, ng baga. And you get what you call a multiple organ failure. Pag electrical dysfunction, yun yung nangyayari minsan na inalud uh, ina, na mga, ina, from the people from Fleischmann. No? Uh, minsan, tumitiklop na lang, nagsasatin cardiac death. Uh, in other words, nag, uh, ang medical term doon is arrhythmia. No? Uh, you have a sudden burst of electrical, electrical activity which can cause the heart to stop. Okay? So, cardiomyopathy also causes that. Excluding these causes of cardiomyopathy, then you have three, no? genetic, na mamana. Okay? So, ang idiopathic, usually, that's due to vir viruses. This is a viral type of cardiomyopathy, yung idiopathic. And yung toxic cardiomyopathy, yun yung from uh, substances that we ingest or that we are exposed to. So which is uh, what we'll be discussing this morning. So, medyo malawak po kasi yung topic of cardiomyopathy. No? Uh, this is a normal heart. So pag nakikita mo, ito yung mga heart muscles. No? So these are the heart muscles. Uh, when you have a dilated cardiomyopathy, pag dilated po, malaki, no? So, malaki yung cavity, no? So, tas numinipis yung heart muscle compared to the normal. Pag hypertrophic, hyperentrophic meaning to say, kumakapal po yung mga muscle, so ito yung heart muscle, yun yung hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay? So, ang restrictive cardiomyopathy, pag napapansin mo, it looks almost the same as the normal heart. Ang problema po is matigas po siya. No? So, matigas po yung heart muscle, nagre-restrict, hindi nakakagalaw masyado yung heart muscle. Uh, 
Ayun, ito yung uh, what, sa uh, atlas form mo, yung heart anatomy. Minsan mas madali maintindihan pag medyo pinatawan natin ang konti. So, ito yung cartoon form. So, ang hypertrophic myopathy, malaki yung heart muscles, no? So, you have a thickened wall. And this is usually what you see in young athletes, no? So, yung mga narinig mo usually sa mga triathlon na nagkakaroon ng mga uh, sudden cardiac death, and ano, uh, you have a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So, wala masyadong sintomas daw kasi nga, hindi naman nag-fail yung pump, hindi po mahina yung muscle ng puso. Makapal lang siya masyado. So, dahil sa sobrang kapal niya, may mga parts doon na nagkakaroon ng tinatawag natin ng fibrosis na pwede mag-cause ng irregular heart rate, no? Na nagka-cause ng sudden cardiac death. So, ang nakikita natin din now is yung dilated na malaki po yung puso. So, ito yung usual na nakikita natin na mga sintomas na hinahapok, no? Uh, madaling papagod kasi malaki yung puso, manipis yung mga pader niya, hindi nakakapag-pump na maayos. No? So, yun yung manakikita mo na manas na manas yung paa kasi nga nagpapump to yung blood, no? hindi na nakakapag-pump na maayos. And sometimes, pag isa baga, napupunoy ng tubig yung baga dahil hindi siya nakakapag-pump. And yung huli, yung restrictive, no? so maliit lang siya. Pero matigas yung walls or yung sinasabi natin rigid. No? So, just imagine, Uh, instead of your heart being a soft muscle, it's like a very hard uh, nut, no? So, para siyang ano, para siyang walnut, di ba? Or, or sabi natin, dilata, para siyang dilata. Yung dilata, kung ano yung laman niya, yun lang, kasi hindi naman nakakagalaw yung dilata. Eh, so, parang ganun yung puso mo. Very tough and very hard, so wala masyadong uh, cardiac output or wala masyadong na ilalabas na uh, fluid or supply sa katawan. Uh, the most common symptoms of ano, so medyo malito from uh, your point of view. So, although the problem is the heart, the problem is the pump. You see that the symptoms include lungs, no? so you have shortness of breath. Okay, so, hinihingal, so sa baga. Then, you can also have especially chest pain, no? So, yun naman yung classic pag sa puso, no? So, chest pain. Then, you can have swelling, so yung heart nasa gitna. Pag pumalya yung puso, siyempre, ano yan eh, um, you will have fluid accumulation first, starting from the feet, no? and then going up so to the tummy. No? So you can have what you call edema. No? So swelling of the legs, and swelling of the abdomen. Uh, no? So yan ah, yun ang common uh, features of heart, uh, cardiomyopathy. So to sum it up, you have DOP, so difficulty of breathing, You have signs of fluid overload, uh, which you call congestion. So, yun yung mga terms that we use to describe the simple the, the heart failure. Okay? Uh, for today, uh, we talk about drug-induced cardiomyopathy. Medyo madami tayong causes of cardiomyopathy. Uh, sabi natin yung dilated or idiopathic, usually caused by mga viral infection. Uh, then you have um, Naman, yung mga naman or genetic, uh, siguro what we can do a lot about are those we have control over. No? Sometimes we have no control kasi if we are exposed to viruses or if we are uh, certain, inherit certain genes which lead to cardiomyopathy. Uh, what we can do a lot about is what we are exposed to. No? And if you look at how many substances cause cardiomyopathy, medyo madami. Um, the probably the most used in our country, and I'm sure Uh, me personally, I've also had partaken of this with di naman cocaine or methamphetamine. Uh, It's really al alcohol no, or ethanol. So, uh, most of our data actually is based on North American data or US data. So, you'll see later that most of our uh, scientific data is based on cocaine-induced cardiomyopathy. It's just your number one drug in the States. Uh, in our country, in Asia, it's usually shampoo or methamphetamine. No? And You can see na even energy drinks, no? Uh, there are also some causes of uh, cardiomyopathy and environmental exposures. Okay? So when you talk about the ethanol-induced cardiomyopathy, so what are the causes ba? Uh, is it secondary? Is it ano? So first of all, just taking alcohol, you have a direct toxic effect already. And aside from the effect of alcohol on your heart, syempre dumadaan yung alcohol sa atay, may mga toxic metabolites pa yan, process pa ng body, which also affect negatively on the heart. And 
Usually, diba, pag umiinom tayo, lagi tayong ihi ng ihi. No? So, you get a lot of electrolyte abnormalities. Diba? Kasi you lose it sa ihi. And sometimes, you get nutritional deficiencies. No? Marami tayo, may sikmura tayo after we drink. So, yung absorption natin of uh, what we need na normal um, daily nutrition is also affected by heavy alcohol intake. And may mga toxic additives din. So, we cannot deny the fact na usually may mga other mga excipients in the alcohol which can also uh, affect the heart. So the WHO has actually tabulated data of alcohol intake in the Philippines. No? Uh, this is until 2010. Uh, if you look at, uh, this is beer, no? So beer, most of us are beer drinkers. Um, actually, sorry, most of us drink gin, no? 73% spirit semi, so mostly gin. So 27% yung beer. Uh, less than 1% yung mga other types of alcohol, so usually mga wine. So this is all in 2010. So usually males above 15 years old, no, uh, per capita drinkers, so 16.7 uh, standard drinks, uh, 5.2 both sexes, at least 12.3 uh, per capita consumption of liters of pure alcohol. So medyo madami. Um, if you look at how many abstainers or how many people don't drink in the Philippines, so sa males, konti lang. Usually 21% lang yun, never nakainom. Sa females, around 46%. Okay? Uh, former drinkers, so 23%. For females, 20%. So, if you look at that, parang mal most of the population actually drink. No? But does that mean that uh, we are all at risk for cardiomyopathy? So, uh, with alcohol, it's usually dose-related. So, we'll go into that later on, the amount of alcohol that you take. Okay? If you look at the prevalence of heavy drinking, so heavy drinking is defined as 17 standard drinks per week. So in, if there, let's say in a uh, week there's maybe 70. So if you take 17 standard more more than 17 standard drinks per week, that means you're a heavy drinker already. So may baka may mga insat, sometimes na one episode na wow, one day you can take more more than that. In heavy drinkers, usually it's around 3.5 percent in males and 0.3 percent in females. So meron pa din. The amount is important because usually uh, what we see is that the effects of alcohol are dose dependent. So, but mas maraming iniinom, mas masama yung ano. Uh, if you take more than two drinks per day, you increase your blood pressure. Um, you have some good effects, no? Uh, good cholesterol increases, but you have a predominance of the bad effects, no? Uh, your blood becomes more malapot, no? Your uh, your coagulability goes down, so mas malapot na yung ulo but you increase your inflammation. And if you look at this, this is congestive heart failure. So you have more incidence of congestive heart failure, cardiomyopathy, with heavier alcohol intake. Okay? And you also increase your risk for atrial fibrillation or arrhythmias, or irregular heartbeats, and stroke. Okay? And sudden cardiac death also. So people used to say that if you take in uh, one or two glasses per day, that's good for the heart. So right now, some of the later data is starting to tell us that even small amounts of alcohol can be bad. You know? Although, but the recommendation still is um, moderate drinking is allowed. Okay, so we'll go more into that later. So if you look at the ethanol induced this uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, it's the leading cause of non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy. And you need to take at least, you should 80 grams per day for at least five years. So that's around uh, one liter of wine uh, uh, per day, or eight standard beers, or one half pint of hard liquor per day. So hard drinkers talaga. So if you're a hard drinker, then you, you're at risk for uh, ethanol or alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy. The good thing about this, it improves with alcohol cessation. If you stop your alcohol drinking, then you reverse the effect. You also have the concept of holiday heart, no? We talked about uh, increase in arrhythmia or yung irregular heartbeats. No? Uh, binge drinking, usually pag Pasco, pag Fiesta, ang daming iniinom. Uh, and what happens if you get you get all of this increased activity, uh, you get your direct effects, so ihi ka ng ihi. And what that causes is as long as you increase your alcohol consumption, you increase the risk of atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation, uh, that's your irregular heartbeat. And that's a risk factor for stroke. So you can get a stroke 
from a healthy relationship. So all of these effects are effects of alcohol. You have effects on the cell. Uh, autonomic effects are effects on the uh, vasculature or how the body handles um, electrical signals in the body. And you cause electrophysiological effects. So that's well studied. Another well studied substance is your cocaine. Okay? So because this is again uh, the number one drug used in uh, the US, most of our data is still on cocaine induced cardiomyopathy. And what co cocaine does is alter sympathetic tone, diba? Um, hyper. So when you say you increase sympathetic tone, parang hyper na hyper ka, so your uh, heart is overexcited or uh, over or uh, overexcited. And that causes a lot of bad effects, no? So you have arrhythmias, which are irregular heartbeats, no? You can get uh, MI, which is a heart attack. And what we're talking about today is just the cardiomyopathy. So other effects, not only on the heart, but they also have effects on the blood vessels. So you can have hypertension, no? a spasm. Atherosclerosis is um, pagpapara ng ugat dun sa puso. So cocaine accelerates this process. And coronary artery disease, so like sa spasm. So parang hyperreactive lahat. Uh, not, not only the heart muscle, but also the blood vessels. And this leads to cocaine-induced cardiomyopathy. So the reason we get cardiomyopathy from cocaine is because in a hyper cap, your heart needs more energy. So your heart rate increases. No? Pag tumataas yung heart rate, yung wall ng puso mas tumisigas, tension. And tumalakas yung contractility. Pero syempre, ano lang naman yan eh. Muscle yan, eventually napapago din yung puso pag masyada mong uh, pinapush. Okay? Uh, that leads also to coronary arterial vasoconstriction. So sumisikip yung mga ugat kasi nga hyper, hyper reactive. And it also causes enhanced platelet aggregation. So mas mataas yung risk na magpara yung ugat dahil mas malapot yung tugo. So usually, uh, cocaine-induced cardiomyopathy, you see left ventricular hypertrophy, which is enlargement of the heart. Uh, you see both systolic and diastolic dysfunction. Ang puso kasi dalawa movement, systolic pag nagpapump, diastolic pag nag-relax. So pag pump, mahina na, as since medyo matigas yung puso, yung pag-relax niya, mabagal. So pag mabagal yung pag-relax, by the time may signal na magpump ulit, kulang yung laman yung puso. So if you have both a systolic and diastolic function, both the effort of the heart to push out that and the capacity of the heart, kung baga, kung dapat 1 liter ang laman niya, 600 cc pa lang ang laman, tsaka siya nagpapump. So pwede talaga mag-cause ng uh, heart failure symptoms. Uh, Long-term effects is fibrosis, no? tumitigas yung heart muscle, and like with um, alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy, arrhythmias, no? irregular heartbeats. Uh, aortic dissection is usually pag napupunit yung aorta. So the aorta is the largest blood vessel in the body. And what cocaine does, kasi nga, tumataas yung heart rate, then it exerts ex effects on the blood vessels. Uh, there's a sobrang lakas ng pag-pump ng heart and yung pag-stretch uh, ng blood vessel, napupunit siya. So usually pag nag-dissect yung aorta, uh, that's another reason why for sudden death. Uh, in our country, most of the drugs is usually uh, shabu or amphetamine induced cardiomyopathy. And very similar to cocaine, since these are both uh, sympathomimetic agents or what we call uppers. No? So, nagpapa hyper din kasi, may ang, ang shabu ang methamphetamine. And you get hypertension, uh, premature CAD, so which is coronary artery disease. Uh, similar to cocaine, also no? MI, acute coronary syndrome, aortic dissection, and arrhythmias. Uh, again, Similar also to a cocaine and alcohol, uh, your cardiomyopathy from amphetamine induced, it's amphetamine induced, it's reversible. So you know, the first thing would always be to stop the offending agent. If you stop taking shabu, uh, you can get, you can, you have a good chance of recovery. Unless there's already fibrosis or there's already permanent damage to the blood vessels. So, so that can happen. Uh, this is a picture of a transient effect of your cardiomyopathy or atypical balloonie. No? So this is how a normal heart muscle should look like. If you take a uh, sympathomimetic agent like cocaine or shabu, uh, what happens is uh, you get an apical ballooning syndrome. So hindi masyado nagpapump 
yung part dito sa puso. Ang gumagalaw lang, yung mga muscle dito sa base ng heart. Okay? So, what means is that instead of you're pushing all of that blood out, you're only pushing the blood here out. No? So, you get, again, symptoms of heart failure. Uh, one of the other things that we've been seeing also in a while is dietary supplements. So, this also causes cardiomyopathy. Usually, it's ephedra, no? which is the offending agent. So again, it's another sympathomimetic agent. It's a common agent in dietary supplements and even in energy drink. And it also increases the heart rate, uh, blood pressure, and peripheral resistance. So you're increasing the blood, increasing the blood pressure, and you're increasing the workload of the heart. So which again, usually cause, can cause your cardiomyopathy. So energy drinks, aside from having ephedra, also you should have a very high caffeine content. And if you're a caffeine-naive individual, so you don't usually take caffeine, you can be very sensitive to the effects of caffeine, meaning you get tachycardia, uh, you get a lot of the, the effects that you don't want to get from caffeine, you know? high blood pressure and arrhythmias. And if you mix this with alcohol or other substances, so may mga nakikita din tayo yung mga energy drinks, no? sometimes they put an energy drink in a beer, and para yung bomb style na ano, di ba? Uh, that's bad, no? Before, uh, yung mga nilalagay, yung mga extra joss nilalagay sa sunmig light or sa sunmig. So, hindi ko alam kung ginagawa pa din ngayon yun. Pero, we have experiences with that. And you get both the bad effects of the caffeine and the alcohol. So, worldwide, how big of a problem is it? So, medyo maliit lang. Uh, this is data from the WHO. So, this is all cardiac problems. Okay, so the color. The color that we want to look at uh, will be orange one. So this is cardiomyopathy. Uh, so this is Southeast Asia. So this is us. So if you look at it, ang laki, pa rin ang, ang laki ng burden ng ibang diseases, peripheral artery. Uh, cardiomyopathy, hindi masyadong kita siguro sa area. It's this line here. Okay? So medyo maliit pa in the, in the broad uh, burden of other cardiovascular diseases like cardiovascular diseases from blood pressure and such. No? But if you think about it, if this is a drug-induced cardiomyopathy, what's sad about it is it's reversible naman. But if you don't take the offending agent, you won't get it. Okay. Uh, looking specifically at uh, US data, uh, cardiomyopathy itself, so... If you look at here, substance abuse accounts for around 4.57% of their cases. Okay. So that's their data. Philippine data, Actually, a bit lucky, so we don't have that big amount of data. Uh, around mga two years ago, so this was uh, in 2016, so three years ago, the study was done among uh, the ASEAN region, you know, the ASEAN integration. And if you look at the prevalence of heart failure in the Philippines, that's around 1 to 2% of our population. And if you look at cardiomyopathy, no, yung non ischemic, that's around 11%. So still a big chunk. No? So a lot of our patients, uh, if we're able to prevent this cardiomyopathy, then we, we save a lot of lives, we save a lot of patients. Okay? Uh, this is also in comparing with other regions, both in Asia and uh, Europe. So if you look at our data, prevalence of heart failure is around 1 to 2%, uh, pretty comparable to other more developed countries. No? Okay? So how do we treat it? So of course, you stop the toxin, uh, but unfortunately, diba, we've seen the data, malit lang, 5%, 20% uh, of 1%. So unlike other diseases, like pag yung mga parado yung mga, medyo matami yan. So alam na natin how to treat them very well. Uh, cases like this now, which are few, no? uh, we know what causes it, but exact mechanism effect, we do not know. So how we reverse it, uh, we, still, we still are not sure. But what we do is, uh, whatever we give for heart failure in general, kasi a heart failure, pwede naman mag-cause ng sa parang ugat, sa diabetes, no, other causes, uh, we still give the same drugs to patients with substance-induced cardiomyopathy. And they do better. So, cardiac metabolites have also uh, shown to play a role in terms of uh, non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. So these are your coenzyme Q10, for your CoQ10 your L-carnity, but very large studies, no, your scientific data, uh, hindi pa established. No? But since it, it doesn't do any harm, we still give it. 
So, why we're here, we're discussing this actually more of ano, uh, we want you guys to be aware kasi the problem is one, uh, sometimes we do not uh, recognize heart failure, the cause, no? kasi we have no data, we have no registry. Uh, what we're trying to do here in Manila Med is we're trying to set up a heart failure clinic, no? Uh, wherein we have patients who have heart failure come to our patient and uh, we get their data and aside from guiding them on what to treat, uh, we also record them uh, what type of heart failure they have, is it cardiomyopathy, etc, etc. Because ano rin, uh, we've seen the cases naman, we've seen uh, so many cases come and go, we've treated cases successfully in cardiomyopathy, but if you ask us, ilan pa talaga ang mga Pilipino na may cardiomyopathy, ilan ang ganitong klaseng cardiomyopathy, wala pa tayong data. Uh, it's, uh, it's not very exact. So what we're trying to start here in Manila Med is a heart failure clinic so we can get the exact data. Kasi we have to face na medyo limited ng resources din. So if we're able to identify which one is uh, the more pressing problem, then we're able to treat that. Aside from uh, registry data in the heart failure clinic, we also give them uh, dietary advice, no? Kasi medications, medyo established na yun. Kumbaga, may science na yun. Most of our doctors already know how to treat heart failure very well. But some are not uh, used to giving dietary advice, uh, advice on how to exercise, no? So these are things that we, which we want to address with our heart failure clinic here in Manila. So thank you for your time. I'll give the mic back to all of you. All right, thank you so much.